The cat's probably hidden his keys. As I get to the towpath, it's already becoming dark. I'm placing my hopes on that the setting sun will hit the keys just right and make them shine up. I keep my eyes peeled on the ground, making my way back to the workplace along the canal. A hunch makes me look back, and surely I spot King Gangsta Cat following me with silent steps. Look at that attitude out of that cat. I wonder for how long it has been doing that. Or why? Possibly to keep an eye on anyone in its turf. The cat keeps stalking me at a slight distance and I ignore it the best I can. My keys are top priority right now. I walk the entire towpath without spotting them. Guess I'll walk back, check some of the busier areas more carefully. I spot that King Gangsta Cat has stopped following me and is playing with something next to the edge of the canal. Good that it's keeping itself entertained. Yeah, it's your keys, dude. Uh, yeah, it's your keys. Good that it's keeping itself entertained. Search under the bridge, walk the entire path again, check out what the cat is doing. Check out what the cat is doing. I'm a bit curious to what would interest King Gangsta Cat. If my keys can wait this long, they can wait a little longer. The cat is sitting right next to the water and is poking at something casually, almost like it doesn't want to admit that it's playing. When I get closer, I get a better look at the object. Wait! Those are my keys Gangsta Cat is playing with. I knew it! Look at the smug look on that cat's face. Oh my god, that is too funny. That cat knew what he was looking for. I can't believe the cat managed to find him. I don't have the time to take a sigh of relief before the cat pokes the keys so they inch closer to the watery doom. Oh my god, this cat's gonna... I just know it. I must do something quick to prevent the catastrophe from happening. Walk up and grab them, run to grab the keys quickly, near slowly, and try to keep its attention. Oh. Um. Oh no. I'd run. Because that cat, slowly that cat's going to knock him into the, the water. I make a run for it, hoping to reach them before King Gangsta Cat pushed them over the edge. The cat jerks and runs off, leaving the keys unattended. See? Yeah. I grab the keys, just happy that I found them and got them. Look at the look on that cat's face. <laughs> After catching my breath, I spot King Gangsta Cat glaring at me from some distance, and I feel a little bad because I took his toy away from him. It wasn't the cat's fault, really, and what I did was pretty rude. Go home. Play with the cat using the keys. No. Let's see. Well. The cat seemed to like playing with the keys and under safe conditions. I might dare to capitalize on that. I hold them by the cork and dangle them above King Gangsta Cat's head. It doesn't cause much of a reaction. The cat just cocks his head and looks at me like, you're a fool. <laughs> okay, so that doesn't work. I'll have to try and recreate the conditions it wanted to play in. Don't tell me. I'm going to put the keys down by the river so the cat can play and knock them in the water. I take one hard last look at my keys and drop them on the ground, although making sure they aren't too close to the edges. After looking at the keys for a moment, King Kangsta Cat reaches out with a lazy paw and swats the keys a little closer to the water. Yeah, see, those keys are going to go in the water. Maybe King Gangsta Cat just likes to push things off edges. I could replace the keys with something else, but it would just end up littering, so I quit play time and then and there. Yeah, those keys, yeah. It's getting late, so I should head home. I give King Gangsta Cat a wave and start to walk away. Uh-oh. The walk home turns out uneventful, and my keys are safe in my pocket. I want to notify Roselle of this, so I head straight for her room. Chubbs is snoozing lazily on her bed. How come there's not a picture of the cat on the bed? I found my keys. That's good. Chubbs spots me and jumps down from the bed to circle my legs. Hey, bud, you want some food? No need. I've already fed it. How'd she get food for the cat? 
All right, then no more food for you. I cuddle his cheek and it seems pretty satisfied with that. The weather is supposed to be good tomorrow. Want to come with me on my walk? We might spot Namazu. We can't leave Chubbs alone in a new place. It's best I stay. But do check on it to make sure it's okay. Of course. I leave her room already pumped for my weekly walk. Go to sleep. Okay, let's go to sleep. As I go out for my Sunday stroll, I keep my eyes peeled for a certain kitten. I'll most likely find it in its usual spot, but I don't trust it not to have moved. I see the tree in the distance and it grows closer as I walk. There's no kitten to be seen. I reach the corner and circle around the tree, but I can't see Namazu. Maybe it actually got home. If that were to be the case, it would be great. A meow crushes my hopes and I look around, still not spotting it. The next meow I can tell comes from above and I look up. <gasps> Namazu looks down for me from a high branch in the tree. What's it doing up there? Cats get up. They're too afraid to go back down. It doesn't look very safe. I haven't climbed a tree in ages, but I did it some back in the day. Except for the first part, it looks like a pretty easy climb. Find something to climb up. Climb up using raw power. See if you can get it down on its own. Let's see if we can get it down on its own. Where's my cursor? It isn't certain that Namazu really is stuck, and it would be a shame to do anything risky if it wasn't necessary. I'll try and see if it will come down on its own first. I stand next to the trunk and call to the kitten. Namazu meows back, and I see it's moving its paw slightly, but not moving away from that spot high up in the tree. After trying some more and giving the kitten some time, I figure it must actually be stuck. It's possible that it's just too scared of the people to come down, but when is Paris ever empty? I have to do something. It needs my help. Find something to climb on. Climb up with raw power. Call an arborist. Okay, let's find something to climb on. I look around, finding a wheeled garbage bin around the corner. I'll put it back when I'm done with it, but for now, I'll pull it next to the tree. Careful not to scare the kitten any further, I climb, climb up on the bin. From there, it's not too great of a task to find footing at the lowest branch. I look up and the kitten stares back at me, meowing meekly and visibly scared. Someone must have startled it up here and it doesn't know how to get back down. It looks at me and I'm fairly sure it recognizes me. Climb up with caution, climb really slowly. Climb up, to, yeah, climb up to it with caution. Namazu is scared of the situation, but I see no sign of me being the source of any of its fright. Hello there, Namazu. I talk to it as I slowly make my way up, keeping a close eye on the kitten so that I can stop if it finds my advancing unsettling. Luckily, I can find plenty of foot and handholds. Namazu is out on a pretty thin branches, but unfortunately it stays put. Yeah, otherwise it's going to fall. Maybe it knows that I'm here to help it. I continue to talk to it as I advance, and I hear Namazu mew weekly. Whenever it's safe to look away from where I'm stepping, I check the kitten, and it waits in what appears to be anticipation. Climb until I'm at the same height as Namazu, and it meows loudly while staring at me. It remains stationary, which is good. However, it's just a little too far away, out on the thinner branches. Maybe I could lean out far enough to grab it, but if it would come closer on its own, that would be good too. Coax with food. Oh, coax by f with food, of course. I make sure I sit steadily on my branch and then carefully extract the treats from my pocket. If Namazu has been up here for a while, it might be hungry. I reach out with the tree and I immediately see how the kitten's nose twitches as it's sniffing the air. 
You know you want it, come take it. After a moment's hesitation, it eases closer, carefully making its way back along the thin branch. I lay my hand flat and the kitten grabs the treat and devours it in seconds. It really is hungry. I feed it more treats, making it come a little closer each time before I grab the kitten with both hands and place it in my lap. I feed it the rest of the treats and it eagerly eats every single one of them. Ah, look at the happy kitten. Oh yeah, Namazu is really happy. It's hungry and a bit tired, but looks otherwise fine. Now comes the part where I have to get both of us down safely. Uh, should be interesting. I reach for my bag. It's probably the best way to carry the kitten as it keeps both of my hands free. Sorry, this will be over in a minute. I grab Namazu and put it in the bag before placing it over my back again. After that, I begin my steady descent and pull it off smoothly. When I reach the last fork in the tree, I drop down and make freeing Namazu my top priority. I open up the bag and bring the kitten up in my arms. Oh, look it. After a few seconds of being safe in my arms on the ground, the kitten falls asleep. Oh, I was so tired from being up there. I look at it curiously and stroke it gently over its back. It's almost surreal. Now I'm faced with what to do next. I've got a kitten in my arms. I've got to put the wheelbarrow back. I've rescued Damazu from the tree, but I don't want to let go of the kitten again. I don't want it to be uncertain whether or not it has a warm place to sleep and food to eat. I'll take it home with me. We can look for its owner, and if we don't find one, Namazu will stay with us. I'm sure Ro will be fine with it. She seemed happy to have Chubbs with us. I'll text her that we're coming on, however. Okay. I found Namazu stuck in a tree, got it down, and is coming home with me. Is it okay? Oops, tired, but otherwise okay. Kitten sleeps heavily all the way home, and inside our door, I find Roselle waiting. How is it? Still sleeping. We might want to prepare some food for it when it wakes up. Who knows for how long it was up there. Poor thing. Must have been terrified. Where is Chubbs, by the way? In my room. It's always uncertain how cats will react to each other when first meeting each other, so it's best to have them apart for now. I'll take your word for it. I'll go say hi to Chubbs so we... Why don't you take it for a little while? She nods and I hand over the kitten, both careful not to wake it up. She looks softly at the kitten and I feel the need to give them space, leaving to hide away next to Chubbs. Fat cat. Some time later. It didn't take much to get Namazu and Chubbs acquainted. Chubbs is just too lovable a cat while Namazu is young and curious, willing to give everything a chance. The kitten has regained its confidence and has become the playful, cheerful young cat it was always meant to be. Thanks to Chubbs always watching over it. The two of them chase after me as I head to Rose's room and I knock before entering. Look at her room is getting cleaned up. Oh my gosh, her bed's even made. Hey, meow me, what's up? Wait, that's Roselle's like. Coming in with my entourage, how was the lecture? It was all right. I suppose spent more time doodling in my notebook than taking notes, however. Well, ain't that university in a nutshell? She and I both chuckle. Oh yeah, it sure is. That an overpriced course literature. It's too nice outside to stay in here all day. I'm done with my schoolwork, so why don't we head out and grab ice cream or something? That sounds like an idea I can get behind. Then let's go. We head out carefully through the doors so that our two little followers doesn't come out with us on our walk. Get some leashes, take them for walks. 
We decide to get them something good as well, since the two of them share a fondness of food. Most animals like food. Namazu's just a little less picky. Ro and I chat and laugh, reminding me of the good old days. There is a, just a bit more cats in the conversation, or maybe it's just that I pay attention to that now. Oh, project lead in game design is Johan Sinergren. Creative director was Sarah Johnson. Oh, this music's really loud. Sorry about that. Writing is Sarah Johnson. Linus Pearson Lund, I guess. Programming is Daniel Vidharjata. I'm sorry. Gazelle Veronica Wickstrom. Jesper Kenwa. Graphic design, Sana Fonsen, Cecilia Hoglin, Sophie Johansson, Santino Camino, Linus Herding, sound design is Sian Wick, Oliver Engstrom. Music, which right at the moment is too loud and I apologize, Anderson Lima, Tony Martinson. Thanks for playing. <laughs> Fat cat peeked up there. Hey, I want to know what happened to the street cat. <laughs> that was really cute. It's got a cute little story, you know. I don't know what happened to Roselle to make her not want to come out of her room or anything. But at, by the end of the story, whatever it was that was bothering her, obviously she overcame it and, you know, had friends, cat friends and everything. And she was feeling better about stuff. This was really a cute story. I really liked it. If you like this kind of story, the visual novels, I plan on doing more of them because they are short and they are cute. But leave your comments below. What is your thoughts on cats? Period. What is your thoughts on this story? And uh, are you a cat person or are you a dog person? So leave your comments below and let me know which ones you like more or do you like them both? Take care, have fun, and as always, be safe out there.